Welcome to Restaurant Influencers presented by Entrepreneur. My name is Sean Walsh, founder of Cali Barbecue and Cali Barbecue Media. Today is a very special episode. We actually got to record on site in Toronto, Canada at the Broadview Hotel. I was asked to go speak in front of 150 hospitality leaders, hotel leaders, restaurant owners um, by our guest, Matt Rolf. Matt Rolf owns a hospitality consulting business in Canada, one of the top operators, one of the top thought leaders. So grateful that he could share his vulnerability with this audience. Uh, we got real. Uh, we talked about leadership. We talked about our own failings. Um, I think you guys are going to get a lot from this episode. Thank you to Toast for believing in this project. Toast is our primary technology partner at our barbecue restaurants. They also power so many of the important guests that we've had on this show. Um, thank you for believing in smartphone storytelling. Please reach out to me. Please subscribe to the show and always share this episode with a friend if it so moves you. Enjoy your time in Toronto. Welcome to Restaurant Influencers presented by Entrepreneur. My name is Sean Walchat, founder of Cali Barbecue and Cali Barbecue Media. I want to give a special shout out to Toast, our title sponsor of this show for believing in restaurants, believing in technology, and more importantly, believing in smartphone storytelling. We are so grateful that we are at the Broadview Hotel in Toronto before the Hospitality Leadership Summit. Very excited because today I get to speak to Matt Rolf. Matt Rolf coaching. Um, we have the book here, You Can't Do It Alone in Life, in the Restaurant Business, and in the New Creator Economy. We learn through lessons and stories. Yep. Matt, where in the world is your favorite stadium, stage, or venue? Stadium, stage. One of my favorite stages is here in Toronto. We have somewhere called Budweiser Stage. It's an outdoor venue. I share this proudly. I am a country music fan, but there's lots. I go to kind of 2000 hip hop show or country music. Uh, but it's just a beautiful venue when you go in, it brings back that feeling Okay. when you walk in and you get to see. They do a great job executing there, but it is my, my favorite place to go. So I'm going to bring the audience in. We're going to, we're going to actually, we're not going to go there. We're going to go to the distillery. Yeah. So the, the, great, the coolest thing about this show, the coolest thing about content, this is why we love this show, is that people can learn through lessons. And tomorrow you're literally doing every single guest that I have on the show, no matter if they're a celebrity, no matter if they're a CEO, like Chris Comparato, the CEO of Toast, I ask them this question of where in the world is their favorite stadium, stage, or venue? And I ask it because in our mind is we want to figure out in real life, how could we host a hospitality conference, a leadership conference for the best of the best? Literally, you're doing what we've been talking about on the show, and you're doing it at the distillery in Toronto. So you're going to be hosting this show. Why? I think it's a time now we've always had a passion of collecting the industry. So how do we step outside of our business? The cheesy saying is to work on our business rather than in our business. But we want to bring like-minded leaders together just to talk about our industry, the state of our industry, where we're at ourselves as leaders, but I think it's important. Our industry is working so hard, so consistently, so relentlessly. How do we step back and somebody needs to create the space. So we can be the forcing function to get one of the most beautiful venues in the country. Um, it's very different. So we get an attractive location. We get world-class speakers <laughs> flying up. So we've got to get some hooks. Um, but the power is we put them in a room together to have that conversation that I hope they get the aha or the shift so they can go get what they deserve from their operations for themselves and for their people. So I don't think that it is cheesy to talk about working on your business instead of in your business. I think it's something that as a restaurant owner who spent, did the clopens, who did all the times where I didn't know what I was doing, I was trying to figure out what I was doing, but now to be at a point where I'm putting on a show with Entrepreneur, I'm here in Toronto, my business, my team at Cali Barbecue in San Diego, they're executing and they're doing the things that they need to do to run the restaurant. Having conversations like this are important, not just in San Diego, not just in Toronto, but they're important all over the globe. And we're fortunate with Entrepreneur that we're able to reach millions of people with this show. For you, when you think about the industry, not just here in Canada, not just in the United States and North America, but when you think globally about, we talked about before we started the show, the beginning of a marathon. Yep. This is a new marathon for the hospitality industry. Yep. As leaders, why is leadership so important and why is it as a leader 
for the person that's listening, the person that's watching on YouTube, on entrepreneur.com, the person that's listening on Spotify, they're driving and they're listening to this. Yeah. Why is the answer to them? I think the one thing, and I'll, I'll share through personal experience, and part of it might come through my experience, but also my pain. One thing I realized if we're at service just of others in leadership, and we leave our, our own gas tanks empty. So we talked about driving in our car, but uh, during the pandemic, you know, I burnt out at, at one point. And what I realized was I allowed everybody to plug into me, but I didn't have boundaries for myself. And what boundaries for myself create time to, how do I get, how do I take care of my body? How do I take care of my mind? How do I make sure that I can show up and be the leader that I need to be? And when it comes to leadership, we need to take care of self before we take care of others. Yep. So how do we start to take care of ourselves mentally, physically, whether it just be time, what do you, what is work serving? You know, we all love our industry so much and it is a marathon and it's going to be a fight, but how do we take time out just to make sure that we have that present time with those we care about, whether it's your dog or your family, whatever that looks like for them. But I think for leadership, once we can take care of ourselves, we can control our state and our energy. We can show up consistently for our people. People are looking for leadership as we start this marathon to say, do I trust the industry? Do I trust my direct leadership team? Do they have a clear path forward? And we need to step back, make sure that we've got that for ourselves and then consistently communicate it to our people so they buy in. So on this show, what we, we talk about is a, a two minute drill, the elevator pitch, something that as entrepreneurs, we're very good in real life of pitching ourselves. However, when we're talking on TikTok or we're talking on LinkedIn or we're talking on social, we're not very good. Can you give the listeners the Matt Rolf two minute drill? Who are you? What do you do? Yeah. What have you accomplished? I'm a hospitality leadership coach, and that's you know, the undescribed hook. I focus on people inside the industry. So I create space for us to get clear on our own, as I said, self-care strategy, our own growth strategy, but how do we focus on the people inside of restaurants? Because that's ultimately what delivers the results, whether it be the guest experience or the growth and scale of the company. But I think we can talk all day about ops. How do we get our people right? How do we get them to believe in our vision, as Simon Sinek says? And then how do we get them to relentlessly execute? Um, that's what I do. I've had a chance. I've been doing coaching for 15 years now. We've worked with some of the world's top brands. We've worked with many of Canada's top brands, whether it be multi-site restaurant groups. I'm very grateful for our client base. And I think why we are so busy and we have the clients that we do is because we're execution focused. It's not entertainment. So how do we just listen to a coach, a speaker, a podcast? How do we focus on it with intention so we do something different? And that's over time. And it took me time to, to learn that. But I'm focused on helping my clients get the result that they want, not just consume more information yep. where it almost creates guilt and shame. Let's do what we want. How do we get clear on that path? So we talk about on the show something my grandfather taught me, which is stay curious, get involved, ask for help. Yep. The curiosity part brings you to a podcast. The curiosity part brings you to a book. Yep. The curiosity part gets you to the inspiration where you sign up to go to the event. But going to the event only does so much. Yeah. Listening to the show only does so much. Yeah. Reading the book only does so much. It's that getting involved part. And then once you do get involved, where are you in that involvement? Because my grandfather taught me that sitting in the front of the class is where you should be. Yeah. Asking the questions to the teachers, asking questions to the person that's hosting the show. These are the things that are going to actually help move your business forward. But it takes vulnerability. You know, in the beginning of this book and on all the shows that you've been on, you've been fortunate to be on so many different incredible podcasts, yeah. incredible content. You talk about the fact that you have a therapist. You're not yeah. shy to talk about that fact. And in the beginning of this book, you make a dedication. Who's the dedication to? The dedication is to, um, it's to my kids. Um, it's to my family and to my kids. Um, for my side, what, and you talk about a therapist and vulnerability, I hid a lot of that story for, for so long. Um, I have ADHD, I struggle with anxiety and depression, and before I thought that I had to hide it because um, people would judge it. Yeah. And what I'm trying to do now when it comes to mental wellness, mental health, um, is again to create space and we're not alone uh, to talk about addiction in our industry and talk about it in a safe place and give people grounding. Um, but I realized that once we get comfortable in our own skin and comfortable with our own story, um, and I'm doing that for like, a lot of who it's for, it's for myself. Uh, but if I want to be the best version of myself, really, like I love our industry. I love all the work that I do, but there's nothing more than I love spending time with my kids. Yeah. And if I want to be real, um, if I want to coach them, uh, we have conversations about feelings and anxiety and, and depression as it's generational in my family. 
Um, but when we talk about it, it creates power in history. Um, so one of my keys, you talked about curiosity is one of our core words and vulnerability. Um, I became a different person when I was able to embrace my own story and share my own truth. And now a quick break from restaurant influencers to welcome our newest sponsor to the show. And that is Davo Sales Tax. Davo is an incredible company. I remember when we first opened up our restaurant in 2008, Cali Barbecue, we were struggling to figure out how to automate sales tax, how to have enough money in our account to file our quarterly taxes. I am so grateful that now today we have found Davo and they are a sponsor of the show and they are excited to help other business owners no longer have to become tax collectors. Davo does it all for you. They take care of the compliance. They take care of the collecting. They take care of the filing. Get your first month free by going to davosalestax.com slash influencers. Let them know that we sent you. Davo is an incredible company. We're grateful to have them on the show. They integrate with all the top POS companies, including Toast. davosalestax.com slash influencers. Automate your sales tax today and get back to running your business. That's very powerful. When you do embrace your story, and we talk about story all the time, how important it is to share that story online. Mm -hmm. But I think that's one of the biggest fears that people have is that their story is going to turn people off. Yeah. When in fact, once you embrace your story, you're going to start to connect on a deeper level with the people you want to connect with. Yeah. And if the other people that you turn away, you turn them away, so be it. Yeah. But now you've embraced your truth. And that I think is as you know, coach or as a leader, and I get the opportunity to play both roles, is to, to get comfortable with I'm, I'm, my story, my message, what I do isn't for everybody. And yeah. to let that go, but when I can really um, be real, it's been amazing the shift, the calls that come through to say somebody say, I haven't talked, I did a talk recently where a young girl stood up and said, thanks for sharing your story. I've never shared that I have anxiety and depression. This, this incredible young chef is, full tears now there's 250 chefs that are in tears in a room because we all feel the same thing yeah and that it what it did is it didn't create separation that room came together because we we're able to really show we show up and the last couple of years the last couple of decades but the last couple of years it's been really hard and what we want to do is like just how do we create space to have a real conversation whatever that looks like it could be positive or challenging or true but to sit across from somebody and say i see you i hear you and i value you I'm sure that was so many people and I'll get in tears and they'll get in tears, but just those three words, whether it's C-level positions or, you know, the, the junior chef, but to say, I see you, I hear you and I value you and the impact of that based on what we've just gone through, it's not over. Yeah. It's, not, it's, it's, it's time for us to keep this conversation going. How do we inspire leaders to change, to make that self change? Mm -hmm. And I think that the one side is we look at positive leverage. So how do we find a situation? And right now, I think for any leader out there, there's more opportunity for positive change than ever before. Even if you're the most successful restaurant group prior to the pandemic, if you do the same thing now, it will not produce the same results. So whether it's positive leverage to change as a leader, positive leverage to get your digital strategy right, positive leverage to get your TikTok, we have to do different to engage with our people. And I think now it's looking at, do we? it, it doesn't need to be so hard. So if I can get with someone and I have them, often in a meeting, I'll have them turn their laptop around and show me their calendar. What do people <laughs> usually do? Hands in the face, you know, story down, and, and I've, cause I've done it so many times. So we don't, it doesn't have to be this way. But in order to do it, we need to make sure that we can slow down, connect, have a relationship. And when, when they see the calendar, what, what is it that there's not enough on the calendar? Or there's too much on the calendar or a combination of both? Great, so great question to give some more depth there. But when the average senior leader in a restaurant group, when I ask for their calendar and they show it, and usually if I, my first meeting's in a boardroom, some of course a room like this. So it's a great grand room. They're excited, but about 20 minutes in the conversation, we get through the introduction. So let's get into this. Is this sustainable? Is it scalable? Yeah. Are, are you, do you love what you do? And sometimes right now we're getting stuck in third, certain areas. So what we want to do is find the leverage to be like, if, if we're not doing what we're best at or what best serves the company and your team, how do we create that change? And I think our side from a leadership perspective to change is just, we have to create a new goal. And then how we have to create gravity that pulls us in the new direction. So the one thing we fought, we got here, it's been two years, but it doesn't need to continue to be as hard as it is for most people moving forward. 
Do you have any stories, you don't need to name any clients, but any stories of the positive change where someone's had that oh shit moment, yeah. where the principles, the things that you talk about in this book, that people have embraced them in on an individual level, yeah. but then that's permeated throughout the rest of the company. Yeah, and I'll share quickly my first experience. So I got a chance to do a Shark Tank like um, presentation about 10 years ago. Nice. On this, this junior you know, entrepreneur, I, I still thought I was young. I, I wasn't, but I'm older now. But I'm <laughs> in front of 110 entrepreneurs and there's this panel of, of sharks. And I do this presentation and, and everybody claps and, and I'm so excited. I'm like, this is going great. And there's this gentleman by the name of Warren Rustin and, he, and he's there, he's a billionaire. Uh, played for the Golden State Warriors. Um, worked with uh, Bush Sr. in the White House. This is an incredible story. Got into oil, multi-billionaire. And he stands up in front of these 110 entrepreneurs and says, Matt, what do you think the number one problem in the market is? I said, probably said something like sales process. And he said, you know, give him the right answer. The answer I think he wants to hear. He said, you think the problem in your business is you? Sure, that my face is purple at this point. So like absolutely bright purple. And I said, well, what do you mean? He said, you think you're the person in the way of the scale of your business. And he pulled me aside afterwards and had a great conversation. He said, you got all the energy, you got all the focus. These people are cheering you on that. And I said that from a caring caring perspective, but right now you have to let certain things go to do what you best serve your business. So I share that story, not to share a story about myself, but a lot of the work that I do with leaders is how do we let go? Because mm -hmm. the one thing, and, I, and what we can share through our own experience, our own storytelling, is to create spaces is what we're doing, what's bottlenecking and re restricting the business as the most senior leader, a GM in a restaurant, or a C-level position as you're looking to add 30 new locations in 2023, but we really have to step back and, and look at it. So I think the, bis the biggest impact I've had is starting to really get clear as how does, what role does the senior leader play? And then how do we respectfully let go, delegate, or, or stop doing things that are no longer serving us? And it takes a bit of work, but I think that's, that's the aha, when people realize that they can, with trust, get out of their own way. So let's get back to the self-care and the therapy, because yeah. I don't think we talk about it enough as men. I don't think we talk about it enough as leaders, but I know we don't talk about it enough in the hospitality space. And it's something that as a recovering alcoholic, I'm a bar owner that is in recovery, yep. that works a program, that tries to put out more content to let other people know that it is okay, that you're not alone. I go to therapy, I call my sponsor, I do all the things that I need to do, but still having a conversation to ground us, to say that it is okay, is difficult. It's difficult to go onto a podcast and say that you're in therapy. Why do you do what you do? Um, I think, like you said, there's not enough people sharing um, that side, and I'm also in recovery as well. Um, so work through 12-step programs. You know, at just at younger ages in the industry, I wouldn't even put it on the industry, just on me. Yeah. Um, so that side, it just opened up to me, and and it wasn't my side was it wasn't the substances were to numb food work is a substance for me where i can yeah. consume to numb but what i realized is how risky that was and i've hit burnout a couple times i'm sure people whatever burnout looked like for you when you just feel like the tank is fully empty or for me it goes in a, in a depressive state so with the therapy side um, it had such a dramatic impact on me and approaching it with curiosity I don't have one therapist, I have multiple therapists. So, do I. So, <laughs> so just on that side, you know, I've got, and not to get the details, there's EMDR therapists, there's cognitive behavioral therapists, there's regular therapists, there's peer groups. Um, but for me, it's what I'm looking to do is change that core belief, not the you know, core belief in heal um, youth based trauma. But on my side, my core beliefs are my limiting beliefs. Yeah. So we've just had conversation prior to getting on the show. There's so much opportunity, should we choose to step into it? Um, but what I need to be able to do in order to do that through my therapist, and not to talk about bigger words, but just what's, what's at my core that's restricting me yeah. and getting in my way. And I've got a whole bunch of stories as to where those come from. Um, but there's power in therapy. We're willing to you know, support our, our team, um, making sure they get the support that they need. And we've had some, during the pandemic, we've had some people come forward that are dealing with addiction issues, mental health issues. Um, but we need help right now. It's mm -hmm. hard. And, and it's, I, I believe, again, therapy should you choose to and it's right for you, is a point of strength. Should you be willing to hear it? Um, if you got the right therapist, you're hearing yourself in a lot of <laughs> cases. So I don't want to talk to myself, but my therapist doesn't really, the one I'm working with now does a great job. But 
I, I think it's something now, it's, I, I really do feel that strength and the, stig the stigma is going away. Yeah. I think mental health for men are just being able to talk about it, or all leaders. We're, we're told we need to have the answer, um, but I think before we have the answer, we need the support system. You put a quote from Biggie Smalls in the beginning of the book. Yeah. What's the quote and why? Um, it's to, to all the teachers who told me I never amount to anything, um, and that's a nice way to say it. Um, at a young age, I was diagnosed with a learning disability. Um, I was failed in grade one, how back, put forward, and essentially, I, so they failed and then they skipped me a grade, uh, which was really hard at grade one to grade three. And then I got put in learning strategies classes. If we all remember, that was the short bus. You know, if you want to use dramatic, and that's my wound, um, or the class with six people, eight kids. And from my side, just based on the environment, I spent my youth, and probably till about I was 35, trying to prove to people I wasn't stupid. Um, and that was my story, and, and there was this fight. I wouldn't take it away, this, this scrappiness to me that I always want to fuck, but there was this weakness where I was like, trying to show up and use bigger words or wear a fancier suit and not be myself. Um, so from my side, the, the, the teacher side, I was told I wouldn't graduate public school. I was told I wouldn't graduate high school, uh, which I was told to get alternative employment in grade 10, which meant go get a trade job by the guidance counselor. Um, and I, I think the side, and it's not necessarily the teachers, but who's around our, our youth to tell them what's possible, not what's not possible. And as a kid, I was told what wasn't possible. So now I think it's, the story there is a reminder to myself um, that that story is not true. Yeah. Um, and that's one thing we'll talk about at the workshop tomorrow. What are your single storylines? So it's repeating stories. I can't find staff. I can't grow my business. These are stories, but what's the evidence? So when I say to myself, I think I'm stupid. But when the, the exercise, what's the fact to prove that? There's no. It's a manufactured story in my mind, so how do I step through? When did you first share that publicly in a business sense? Mm -hmm. it when, was, and, and, and what was the result? Yeah, it was from stage. It's so funny, I couldn't do it in a room. You know, a room of six in a, in a strategy session. My, my team was aware, but I remember doing it, I was working with a great restaurant group here in one of Canada's top restaurant groups. And we made an arrangement, they train all their leaders multiple times. So we do a couple hundred leaders per city traveling across Canada, big, big group. Um, and I went up and I shared my story and, and the president of the company, who didn't know, he pulled me aside after, he said, man, what are you doing? <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah, and, he, and I said, and they've done a lot of training, so that was, that was pretty raw. Like I've got a pretty colorful past of where I grew up. The people that came up to the stage afterwards, like I'm seeing people, and it makes me emotional now, but it's seeing people stand back like eight deep in tears and arms waiting to come out, right? And I don't, didn't expect that emotion to hit me. But the impact, I'm like, this is, the, this is my work, right? I don't do, I, I spent my whole life in, in the industry, you want to talk ops? Let's talk ops all day. Yeah. We want to get real, let's talk people. What inspired you to share that? Um, geez, I think is, if I go to the therapy, I was, I was holding on to so much um, that wasn't serving me anymore. And the only way for me to let it go was to share it. Was to start, and then I, was, I started sharing more, more and more. Um, and I think vulnerability was not over leveraging vulnerability. It was what's the truth and how do we leverage the truth. Um, I got to a point where it just wasn't, it just wasn't working anymore. Yeah. yeah. I just like, it wasn't something that I could, I could continue. Um, and I made a lot of money and in one year, and in my definition, a lot of money, some people watch this, not a lot of money, but in my mind, as somebody who grew up in government housing, <laughs> it, it felt nice to, to have a car and a house, um, but I was unhappy. Um, and I had people around me that were incredibly wealthy, making millions of dollars that were very unhappy. And in my peer group, my, my forum group, the leader said that was on a monthly basis, uh, they shared, don't be us. And I think this, this step back was, it's, it's not about money, it's not about growth, it's about connection and relationship. And I needed to, in order to do that, start to, you know, the real Matt, please stand up. Yeah. yeah, that's, it's powerful because when you think in a business sense and you think in a consulting and a leadership, we're all looking for the secret. We're all looking for what's the magic that's gonna change my business when the magic is getting real and getting raw in a way that we typically don't do with one another as men, with one another as leaders, with one another with anyone in our company and publicly. 
Why is it so hard to do? I think it's, and I can only, I'll use my experience and then some of my clients, is my was fear of being judged. Um, why we don't share, what are people gonna think if I share my real story? Um, they're gonna let me go. Um, I remember when I started to share with people, you know, you go out to a couple of things, I don't drink. Yeah. Why do you not drink? I, I you know, just don't drink. Outside. And, and then I, I thought, okay, here, let's, let's share it. So there's a side, I'm I fine. Mean, I did the same thing to you. Yeah. <laughs> you asked me for, to give me a welcome basket with beer and wine, yeah. and I didn't have the courage to tell you when I should have. You yeah. said, I'm mad I don't drink. Yeah. Like, I, I was a Hall of Fame drinker, but now I'm in recovery. Yeah. And, you know, that's just being open, open and real with our, our audience is that there should be, I shouldn't be doing that. Yeah. I should have the courage to do it, but because of so many different reasons, I don't. And I think we're pushed to, to as leaders, when I, and, and in that hospitality space, we're going to a distillery, <laughs> like, we're yeah. going to a distillery yeah. event. I don't want to make the conversation about my recovery. Yeah, I, I think, and the, the side is, but what I want to show leaders is that they don't need to be perfect. You know, perfect creates disconnection, not connection, in my yeah. experience. And I also want to, the, the reason why I share my story is because I, I, it, it's my therapy. It does help me. Every time I share it, I take something from it. But it also, what I'm trying to do is, as, if somebody hires me as a coach, they're saying, this person has some answers from me. I might have some answers, but it's your context and story and a whole, a whole war that happened through here to yeah. here. And, and I love it, but if I can be real, it creates space for people to say, well, I don't need to be perfect anymore. Yeah. And some of the, some of the best leaders I, I've worked with to see, you talked about ahas, where people can show up and say that they don't have the answer or that they've had pain or that they're, they, you know, recovery for all kinds of different areas or therapy. Um, but then to see how the people respond. Because if you're looking, we, we lead people. If you want your people to buy in, Something we talk about in the book, it's not about the book, just be real. And right now the foundation of any team as we talk about retention and attraction, we don't have trust. You know, being real is for me, that in my experience, is the foundation of trust. So very fortunate from this show that I got to get to interview the best of the best, most incredible people in the hospitality space, storytelling space, content creation space. And Fabio Viviani was one of those incredible guests that I had on. Um, you and I, when we were planning this, this event and me coming up here to Toronto, you told me a story about Fabio that I'd love for you to share. And I'm sure that he's okay with you sharing that as well. Yeah, it was, um, I got a chance to go to a program, Tony Robbins Business Mastery Program. And it was a strange scenario. I actually showed up a day early. Uh, the event messed up and they told me the wrong date. So there's, and I'm, I've been, one of my bucket lists, it's on my vision board, was to go to a Tony Robbins event. So I get there and show up, I'm a day late. So I walk into a room full of 5,000 people. They've already got their groups. And I explain and they, they get me this, this usher that walks me over and they sit me beside this, this guy. Where all these people are taking pictures of him. And he didn't seem to care. But we, I ended up building a, a beautiful relationship with Fabio over the five or six days that we were together. But at the point, um, at that point, I've lost both my parents to cancer. Um, and my dad was going through his, his second stage cancer and it's the first person where we're sitting beside each other and he had someone in his family that that he actually just sent to Germany to get some other um, to get some other treatment but he shared with me the healing side and the belief um, and, and we just had so those two grown men like both in chairs sitting this Tony Robbins said someone was talking I have no idea who it is but I'm watching this one of the top restaurateurs in the planet and his drive is incredible but he shifted gears and just sat present with me for a moment to share I understand what you're going through just listen. And he said, what you can do through my experience, not through my judgment, but what I've gone through is, is show up. And I went back and me and my dad, as hard as it was, watched the show on Netflix. I think, I, I think it's called Heal, I have to remember, or something along healing along those lines. And I just looked at my dad and I said, we got to choose to. This cancer is terrible, but it can, I think it can kill the mind before it kills the body. And I'm watching both my parents go through it. I, I say, I haven't had it. So I just say that as, as a witness, but on the side, like I got 18 more months of my dad's life based on somebody sitting in my side. Like he changed. Like when we went through that, and I took that home to my dad. That might it might sound dramatic. I really do believe that his mindset got him another year. Um, but the time that we had and the depth of the conversation um, that we chose to, based on you know Fabio saying, um, one thing you do is just be real. Have the conversations you want to have. Some of the conversations with my childhood trauma were not good ones. Yeah, he didn't want to have. Them. 
Um, yeah. But I had it for him and I had it for me to give him a, some peace. Um, and I couldn't be more grateful. And that's when we first met. So it's actually pretty deep. And pretty, right? Like it just hit me when I saw Fabian. And I didn't think of that until that time. Um, but sometimes when people leave with vulnerability and strength, like Fabio did with me, and he, I'm assuming, I'm not assuming, I know he does this all the time. Yeah. Um, it was great. And now a quick break from restaurant influencers to share an exciting new offer from our sponsor, Atmosphere TV. Go to atmosphere.tv forward slash BBQ to not only get Atmosphere TV for free, but also our audience is given the gift of $200 in ad credits, as well as free activation. Join more than 40,000 other venues who use Atmosphere TV by signing up with the code BBQ at atmosphere.tv forward slash BBQ. Keep guests entertained with Atmosphere TV because you have the ability to turn your promotions and your advertisements onto your television with this platform. The simple plug and play device lets you take control of the content on your screens. Keep guests entertained, engaged, and informed of real-time specials, career opportunities, and announcements that you can personalize within your own custom content dashboard. Tap into great channels such as America's Funniest Home Videos, Fashion, Throttle, Chive TV, Sports Highlights, Red Bull, Real Madrid, along with unbiased news and entertainment. There is something for everyone. Over 60 curated channels of short form, entertaining content to choose from right at your fingertips. They also have an incredible ad supported network that allows you to not only market within your four walls, but also locally or nationally if you desire. The platform gives you full control to dial in your marketing efforts. Please go and visit atmosphere.tv slash BBQ and let them know restaurant influencers sent you. Every, every business should be their own media company. Um, they should produce their own content. You as a leadership coach, I was telling you before we started recording how impressed I was with you and your team with the work that you're doing on social. And it's some of the stuff that I'm gonna be presenting tomorrow to other leaders in the room, not just restaurant owners, not just restaurant groups, but it doesn't matter if you work for Toast, if you work for Davo, if you work for Atmosphere, if you work for Cisco's, the US Foods, whoever you're working for, no one is gonna share your story but you. Yep. I told you I wasn't gonna to come to Toronto unless you got on TikTok. Can you talk about why you know it's important and what what do you see for your business moving forward? Yeah, I, I just think um, from our side, writing the book was one thing. Writing the book was more just to consolidate thoughts. Um, we made a commitment over a year ago, um, right or wrong, that LinkedIn was our platform and we were going to commit to a video a day, no matter what, no matter the likes. And this goes back to Gary Vaynerchuk, just what, you know, I had a chance to ask Gary a question once and he said, when I see you next, because um, you know, some people back at the conference, when I see you next, do the work, man. Yeah. Do the content. Do, do the work. Like he said, there's not much I can say unless, you, unless you, you've got the content and you've got a commitment to the content. Um, but part of my help, like in my core, I get a chance to work with great people. Not everyone I'm going to have the opportunity to work with. Our side, if we can tell stories, not you know go with just solutions online, but really tell stories that adds value to the market. Um, our path is to go from just doing social content to following proven strategies. Yeah. Like you've got it. We want to build a better foundation to get more messaging out to the health of our industry. Our industry needs, like the space that you've created here, our industry needs this. Yeah. All industries need now more than ever. And I think if we really go out with intentional content focused on who the actual audience of that content is, um, that's my, my focus. We did the podcast, we do the podcast, do our own podcast, take our content to the next level, help more people. Why? We help more people. If a very small percentage of those we end up working with, a very small percentage of those buy the book, as you know, we don't make any money on books. Yeah. But we actually pay at Amazon sometimes <laughs> for the book. But I, I just, it, in my heart, I made a decision a long time ago. I want to help this industry. Um, it's my passion. It's my career. And content's the best way to do it. Well, I, uh, I can't tell you how impressed I am with the content that you guys have done. Um, there's a reason why. I mean, I, I actually just, on the way here, when I was flying on Air Canada, I was reading Top of Mind by John Hall, which is a content marketing book that was published, you know, 2016, I believe. I'm not sure, don't, don't quote me on that, but I read it before I started our first podcast in 2017, and then I reread it in 2020, and now I'm reading it again, and it all goes back to the, the magic that happens in life. It doesn't happen by accident. Yeah. 
and content and the technology that we have to be on TikTok, to be on LinkedIn, to be on Instagram, to put the things that we're doing in real life, to document instead of create, and to publish these things allows us to go, wow, I really need to get to Toronto to go see Matt because I see your content. Yeah, yeah. And that, that to me was the humbling side. Like I, I, I think part of us was to put the content out so we could shoot our shots. Like yeah. It's a huge deal to have you in Canada and speak to your audience. It's, I, I'm so grateful for us to be able to yeah. spend the time and continue to build a friendship in person. But it's just, if we didn't have that, you're going to look at us and it's just another person looking for another conference, right? But the, that's what's exciting to me is that, you know, when you're thinking about the industry as a whole, all over the globe, wherever you are that's listening to this podcast, wherever you are watching this video, what if one day we're there? You and me are there and yeah. Fabio and, you know, Chef Robert Irvine and all of these incredible thought leaders are at wherever you are in the world and we're all trying to do the thing that we can do best and we're, we're not perfect. Yeah. <laughs> That's nope. like what we know today will be completely different next year. will be completely different in three years, but we're going to build on top of that and always be leveling up. Yeah, and I think part of like this side, the content creates a community that allows us to create an audience. And I think everything starts with intention with the focused outcome. Yeah. And you know, our, our intention is, we have, our, our outcome is we want to help more people. So we have to get clear on the intention. How do we get out there and start to create it? You know, for us just to go live. But our goal is we want to be in 2023, we, we want to be doing these talks in Australia. We want to be in London with some talks. Not because I want to get on a plane and go to London. We can, do that if we want. We do yeah. both, but we don't see these cities as much as Correct. we like when we get there. But I think it's an opportunity to spread a message and and get out of our own backyards. So my coach, biggest thing, got to get out of your backyard. Got to get out of the city. Yeah, I know the city really well. I know this country really well. And we've I don't know Toronto very well, but I'm learning a lot. <laughs> I've learned a lot. I, if I look over the shoulder, you can see the sea of Tower. It is, it is a beautiful city. We're going to try to get Sean to see some of it. But um, part of it is my stretching my comfort zone and going and see new places. Yeah. So every single week on Wednesday and on Friday on Clubhouse, we do a call for leaders. It doesn't matter if you're in sales, if you're in marketing, if you're in hospitality. This is an open forum on Clubhouse. It's an audio app, uh, 10 a.m. Pacific time, 1 p.m. Eastern time. We want you to join us. Tell us about your restaurant. Tell us about your content creation. Whatever you're doing, it's just an incredible space. Um, and then we also do a social shout out. So for people that are listening to the show, that show up on Clubhouse, um, this gives me an opportunity to highlight the work that they're doing. And this week's social shout out goes to Loisent Gordon. Um, he has an incredible 160 year old bar in New York that he took over. Um, he's been showing up on, on uh, Clubhouse. We appreciate you. Thank you for your leadership. Thank you for giving us the New York uh, City perspective. But for you, you've got a big conference coming up. You get to give somebody a shout out, anybody on your team that, uh, that deserves some special entrepreneur.com recognition. Yeah, I'd love to shout out. She's, she just came in the camera, which I can see her face turning red <laughs> already, but she wasn't here a minute ago. She just got, but I, I'd like to give a shout out to Eliza. Like the one thing that I'm very, that I learned a long time ago is I'm lucky enough to often be the person in front of the camera. Yeah. I don't get here without Eliza. I don't get here without my team. Um, I absolutely do not. What we're doing tomorrow, um, I can't wait for it. It does not happen without the effort that Eliza and the team have put in. And I want to I want to highlight the team, but I want to highlight Eliza for her leadership, her pressure on me. Um, there was some times in this where, where it got to a point, just again with um, the pandemic and COVID stuff, where the, do we push it again? Our thing is, no, we're going to do this. We're going to be focused. And the one, the best thing that I want to highlight Eliza for, because when we're doing great things outside our comfort zone, it's also been fun. Yeah, it can be hard. It can like events can not be fun. I've done a lot of events that the, the event day was fun, but the, the prep and the follow up was not fun. <laughs> Sorry, just to say that for, but we've done a lot of workshops. Um, but on this side, it's we've had a ton of fun getting ready for this. We're so excited to have you here. But I'm I'm pumped for tomorrow. And the yeah. great thing about a coach is that tomorrow we both know we're not the content. The audience is the content. They're great speakers, but tomorrow's a workshop. It's not speakers from the front. Um, and anybody who's coming, we're doing the work. Yeah. yeah they, everybody we told, we're, you're going to do work for a day because I want them to go back inside the four walls of their office or their restaurant and be able to do different. Yeah. And not forget about what a speaker said that sounded good. Absolutely. So if you guys want to get in touch with me, it's at Sean P. Welchef, S H A W N P W A L C H E F. And that's on any social app that's TikTok, LinkedIn, Instagram, Clubhouse. Um, you can find me there. Matt, what's the best place uh, for people to get in touch with you? Best place right now says to go is to mattrolf.com. Um, so last name, M-A-T-T, -T, last name R-O-L-F as in Frankie.com. 
And then find me on LinkedIn is our core platform right now. Um, we've got some restructuring because Eliza's staring at me. So <laughs> we've got some pressure here from Sean. So on, on the change of our TikTok, TikTok channel. TikTok shame anybody. <laughs> yeah, forget TikTok shame. And on the IG side, so we, we've got our content set up, but you'll see all the links will come there also through our Instagram side. But we're, we are putting content out every single day in hopes that it helps somebody out there. That's awesome. And I just want to say thank you to Toast. Uh, we were grateful for the sponsorship. Davo Sales Tax, if you're looking to automate your sales tax, and Atmosphere TV, if you want to improve the content in your bar or restaurant or any business you have, um, check out Atmosphere TV. Thank you guys for listening to the show. Please subscribe. Please share it with somebody that could, uh, could have an impact. And if you're in Toronto um, or wherever you are in the world, connect with Matt and his team. Um, they're doing some incredible work. And be sure to uh, check out this book. We will catch you guys next week. Thank you. Thank you to our title sponsor, Toast. Toast is the primary technology partner that we use at our restaurant, Cali Barbecue. It is also the primary technology partner that so many of the guests have shared with us on this show. People like Sam, the cooking guy, Stacy Poonkinney, Jeff Alexander. So many times the guests tell us that they're using Toast when we didn't even know that going into the interview. That is why we are so grateful that they sponsor this show. We want you to win. You that listen to this show, we want you to improve your digital hospitality. Toast is built for restaurants and it's built for you. Toast is the restaurant first platform that's built for your needs, whatever your size, concept, or ambitions. Improve your bottom line with a customizable platform that's easy to learn, use, and grow with. And it meets you where you are with all the right tools for your price point. If you have any questions about Toast, please DM me at Sean P. Walchef, S-H-A-W-N-P-W-A-L-C-H-E-F. I will get you the link to the right Toast contact in your market. It's so important that if you listen to this show, that you win. We want you to be on this show eventually. Let us know that you heard the show, you heard about Toast, you implemented Toast, you did a Toast unboxing in your restaurant. Talk to us about how you've impacted your village, your city, your community. Share your Toast story with us. DM me today to learn more. And be sure to check out Toast.